between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The subject under which we will study on today is entitled, What Do You Want Me to Give You? What do you want me to give you? Solomon is one of the major characters in this Bible episode. Solomon is the son of David, according to 1 Kings 2 and verse 12. Solomon took office as king of Israel after his father died, according to 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 10. Solomon is of utmost importance to us today because he is in the blood line God established through which Jesus, our Savior, our Savior who was sacrificed for our sins on the cross was buried and rose from the grave for our justification. Solomon is important. He's in that bloodline. Acts chapter 13, verse 22 and 23, the Bible says, and when he had removed him, this is Paul in a sermon to some Jews, and he is giving them history concerning Jesus, letting them know that Jesus was not somebody who just set himself up to be the Savior. Jesus was in the mind of God many, many years before he was born through the womb of Mary. He raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. It is clear, even in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 7, that Solomon is in the bloodline through which Jesus came into the world. Solomon demonstrated his devotion to God in the most dramatic fashion when you read this episode. Solomon sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings, according to verse 4. I'm looking at everybody, and when I said 1,000 burnt offerings, you didn't move. It didn't bother you because I don't believe that we can visualize the magnitude of that because we're not used to seeing that. That's something you've got to be mindful of when you're studying the Bible. There are some things in the Bible that you read that you're not used to seeing. So sometimes it can just pass over you because I don't deal with that on a daily basis. And so I really don't understand that, but 1,000, you remember, they offered a lamb in the morning and a lamb in the evening. They did that every day, 365 days a year, lamb in the morning, lamb in the evening. 365 days in the year, that's uh, 730 lambs. And Solomon offered 1,000 lambs in one day, burnt offering. They were working all day. That was all, and a whole lot of them was working in order to accomplish that in one day, 1,000. We come together for an hour or two, and we're tired and we want to go home. But they offered 1,000 lambs to God to express 
devotion and thanksgiving. Somebody might have said, well, can we just offer one for everybody? No, 1,000. Are y'all with me? That was a lot. That's a lot of animals. Can we get a 1,000 lambs inside this building? Can you imagine what this property would be like if you had a thousand animals on this property along with the people? That was a huge undertaking. The sacrifices were continuous. The sacrifices were extraordinary. The sacrifices were spectacular. Well, I, I want us to begin to think about doing great things for God. I believe we're used to doing just enough to satisfy us. But when you start talking about pleasing God and, and looking at what God has done for you, what we do is not enough. You need to start telling yourself, Lord, I need to do more for you. Are y'all with me? I need to sing more. I need to pray more. I, you know, I think a lot of times we say, well, brother, Ray, you're talking about giving, giving more money, giving more money. Listen, if you pray, if you sing, if you serve, you're going to see this in just a few moments. If you pray, you sing, you serve, you won't have to worry about giving. Are y'all with me? We don't prosper ourselves no way. Are y'all with me? You talking about your giving is like you made it. That's not what the scripture said that was quoted upon the first day of the week. That every one of you lay by in store as God has prospered you. We are, we are acting like we are prospering ourselves. Well, this is all I can do. That's not all that he did for you. That's how you ought to start thinking what he did for you, not what you do. Are y'all with me? You, you giving, and you know, this, this, is, this is really, really interesting. We are give to folk that do nothing. Nothing for us. You will give, you know, I'm going to go on and do it. Y'all like, laughing like y'all done heard that before. At Joker, haven't done nothing for you, giving you a pain. That's what, they, that's what they do, give you a pain. Every time they come around you, they, tell you, they don't need nothing. They take him. Are y'all with me? Hey, they tell you that they need. They, you at work, and they don't want to go to work. Stay home. Sit around. i wait for you to get home and tell you what they need. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And when it comes down to God, God is blessing you every day. Every day he's blessing you. And then when you come to the church, you, you, don't, you don't want the church to say no. That is the biggest catastrophe you would ever want to hear, that the church say no. Because you got it in your mind that God always gives. He always does for you. You know it's true. But then when it comes down for you to do for him, you'll do for somebody else. See, before him. And you can't, man, you can understand paying an eight hundred dollar car note. We want to take up a collection for eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Are y'all with me? That's the truth. That's the truth. You can understand. Well, I guess I, you know, well, it's going to be $800. You ain't put no money down on it. Man, you just $800. Well, I guess I'll have to do it. 
And man, you struggle to do. But man, when you get to the Lord, man, you, man, I, can't, I, I can't do nothing today. Huh? I can't do nothing today. And so, 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 so we've got to start thinking in terms of continuous, extraordinary, spectacular. We got to do something great for God. We got to do something great for him. We've got to, we, we, we've got to, we've got to get that in our minds that I can't give God just enough. And I can't, I can't gauge what I, I'm giving God on, on my human reasoning because God is greater than me. Flames blazed intensely. Smoke filled the temple. The aroma pleased the Lord. Our text follows Solomon's tremendous demonstration of his devotion. See, what we are about to look at is what happened after the worship. Are y'all with me? You got to get this now. See, you, you, see, 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 what you are probably thinking about, a lot of us are thinking about what we're going to do after we get out of church. Some of us already have plans on what we're going to do when church, as we stay, say it, is out. Hurry up, Brother Frazier. It's 11 o'clock. Are y'all with me? Yeah, it's true. I'm not reading your mind. I just live in the same world you live in. And something happened after worship. Watch what happened. Verse number five. This is after worship. God said to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you. This question came when? Come on, y'all. When did it come? After worship. God's response to Solomon's worship was, Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you. That was God's response to Solomon's worship. After a tremendous expression of worship and praise to God, Solomon is given by God an opportunity to ask whatever he wants. Now, the question is, what is this really demonstrating? God, who do you mean ask whatever you want? Well, is it possible that God, after seeing Solomon's tremendous expression of worship and praise, is giving Solomon an opportunity to demonstrate where his heart was truly positioned. See, the timing God uses to present this question to Solomon could indicate that one, worship captures God's attention. Worship captures God's attention. Are y'all with me? So you, if you're going to be a child of God, then you've got, and you're going to stay in favor with God, it's not just God knowing you. You've got to know God. Are y'all with me? Then I, if you, you remember when we were coming, going to school, and we would get to combination locks. Yeah, remember when you got to junior when you got to junior high school, that's when you got your lockers. Got assigned to your locker, your own personal locker. Had to get your combination lock. So you, your parents buy your combination lock and it's in a package. Now, in that package is the combination. Are y'all with me? Now, if you just tear the lock out the package and throw the paper away, you in trouble. You in trouble. Nobody around us had no boat cutters. Are y'all with me? Nobody had any boat cutters. That lock, when that lock locked, you might as well throw it away. 
And then you're like, so I can, I can listen to it and I can get it. Didn't, it didn't, it, it, it didn't work in his day. It didn't work in mine neither. So, so if you don't know how to work the lock, the lock doesn't do you any good. If you are a child of God and you don't know how God functions with you, then the same God that you think is a blessing to you can be a curse to you as well. See, the, the devil didn't make up death. The first time you heard about death was from God. God said, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. You didn't hear that from the devil. You heard that from God. God can be good to you, and God can be severe to you. So we have to know how God works. You at home, I think I'm going to miss worship today. You don't know how God works. You don't know how God, every time you miss worship, you, that's an indication that you don't know how God works. Because God came to Solomon and asked him for whatever, to ask whatever he wanted after worship. We want to miss worship and get everything from God. And the word of God is telling us that that doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, when you go back to the Old Testament law, Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt have no other God before me. First commandment. That's about worship. <laughs> You can't worship anybody. I'm the, I'm the Lord that God that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I brought you out of bondage. You can't have no other God before me. You cannot worship any God other than me. They had just come out of being in Egypt for 400 years, and they had been exposed to worshiping different things. The Egyptians worshiped the Nile River. The Egyptians worshiped cattle. Egyptians worshiped the sun. Every one of those plagues that God placed upon Egypt was an indictment, him executing judgment against their gods or what they thought was gods. And when he brought Israel out of Egyptian bondage, he says, thou shall make unto thee no graven image. That's worship. That's worship. And then God tells them in Leviticus 26, if you uh, obey my statutes, judgments, and laws, I'm going to bless you. In other words, if you worship me according to my commandments, I'm going to bless you. But that blessing comes after. Are y'all with me? And then when we get over into the New Testament, Matthew 4 and verse 23, uh, Jesus says, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's looking for worshipers. You want to stay home from worship. I'm going to miss worship today like it ain't no problem. God came to Solomon after worship. That's God's response to his worship. And then, and then worship positions a person's heart to seek God's supply, seek God's approval, seek God's glory in performing what God has called that person to do. Worship puts you in the mind. Have you ever been in worship? And when worship is over, you've got this resolution in your mind. You may not say it to anybody, but you got it in your mind. You know what? I'm going to do better for God. I'm going to do better for him. I'm going to do more for him. I'm going to live right. Have you ever been around someone and they come out talking crazy after worship and you, know, you just got out of church? 
what are you what are you suggesting since you since you've been in worship you should be thinking better than that worship positions our heart to seek god more depend upon him more Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. Solomon teaches us what we should do. In reading, we can get excited about the blank check God offers to Solomon. Solomon asks whatever you want. And that sounds so good. Some of us are sitting here right now wishing that somebody with money would give us a blank check. Let me get myself together. And that's something that just imagine what that would be like. You know, somebody just give you a blank check. And that's something. Have you ever been, listen, have you ever been dressed up for church? And you stop and get some gas. See, some of us have gotten, uh, you know, a little, little, you know, we, we, we uh, try to work with our surroundings. So we get our gas at night, you know, before we go in. And uh, so we won't have to stop on Sunday mornings or Sunday after church, dressed up and everything to get gas. Because it, it, it depends on what gas station you stop at, there's going to be somebody there. It's going to look at you and say, oh, but Larry just got out of church. And the assumption is that you go to church, you're going to put some money in church. So, but Larry and, uh, just got out of church. He then had a good session with God and and he didn't put some money. Nine times that didn't even put all this money in church. See, they reading you, man. They just they getting you, sizing you up. You know, your car's washed. Shoes are shine. Hair cut, hair comb, hair fixed. Sir, you look like a Christian man. Y'all, y'all, yeah. You must have heard that before. Huh? You must have heard that before. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for that blank check. I remember, I remember one night uh, I was getting some gas, and this and it, it's it's this guy. Uh I saw him. It was this gas, the gas station. It was this uh, another shopping area. Uh, and it was all closed up, lights was out. He was sitting over there on the porch area, and I was getting my gas. And uh, he got up, and, you know, in my peripheral vision, I could see him coming to me, walking straight toward my car. And uh, so he got there, and he asked me, you know, give him some money, and, uh, and uh, he told me his story and everything. And I had a, five, I knew I had a five dollar bill in my pocket. I didn't even have to take my wallet out. I had five dollar bill in my pocket. So I just reached out of my pocket, and uh, I just gave it to him. And uh, he looked at me and said, "Why did you do that?" And then I told him who I was and, and so forth. But I think about this question. He said, "Why did you do it?" Like he was expecting me to say no. He had been told no so many times. And he was expecting me to say no. And I didn't exchange no words with him. I just gave him a $5 bill. Told him who I was and where I was and invited him to come and be with us. So, so some people are expecting a breakthrough. And you might be sitting right here today and, and just wishing and praying for something to happen that will take me to the next level. I want to be at the next level. I don't want to be down. I don't want to have my back against the wall. I, I don't want to want and I can't get. 
And so, so some of us are looking at Solomon getting this blank check, but we should more importantly concentrate on the timing in which God offers the blank check and Solomon's response. Are y'all with me? So sometimes we look at the, the tangible thing and we don't look at what's behind that tangible thing. So, so I'm encouraging us to not just look at the blank check. That, that what God did for Solomon, it was tremendous. When you study the life of Solomon, there was nobody like Solomon. Solomon was, Solomon was, Solomon could stand uh, uh, toe to toe with the richest people in the world today. Are y'all with me? Yes, yeah, Solomon was, Solomon was a wealthy man. And God made him that way. But I want you to see the timing. See, see, he begins his response to God by praising God for his faithfulness and remembering his great mercy to David, his father. So that's how Solomon begins his uh, response to God. He doesn't begin his response to God saying, well, God, I want this and I want that and I want this and I want that and I want that. No, no, no. He addresses God out of praise. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Church, we've got to learn how to praise God. You don't go to a courtroom and call the judge by his first name. You have to show some honor, your honor. What are you doing? You are giving the judge some praise. We talk about, but well, I don't want my children to say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, sir. You are teaching your children how to praise. Your mother is somebody. Your mother is not your equal. She's somebody. And you should address her. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Recognizing who she is. Yes, sir. No, sir. You teach your children how to praise. The reason why we don't get along like we should sometimes in the church is because we don't know how to praise. I, I, I know, I, I, I know who God is. Well, why are you walk around being disrespectful? Are y'all with me? The brother Jordan is not my daddy. Are y'all with me? But when you learn how to respect people, you don't have to be told who that person is. I know who he is. And I'm not, and I know who I am. Well, you don't have to say yes, sir, to Brother Jordan. I have to respect. I have to respect. I'll say yes, sir, to Brother uh, Ron, Brother Reed. Are y'all with me? Because that's what we do. We respect. When you praise God, that means you recognize who God is. God is not my equal. Are y'all with me? It's not my equal. Church, I'm telling you, that is one of the, one of the you listen to the news. We are people who do not respect. Our children are growing up with a lack of respect. And Solomon started with praising God. He says, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father, David. He's recognizing his father. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for my father. I wouldn't even be in this position 
if it were not for my father. Are y'all with me? Man, that's some kind of humility. That is some kind of, now see Solomon, see now, now Solomon was, uh, you gotta understand that Solomon had gone through some stuff now. See Solomon, see when Solomon um, became king, he became king at the death of his father. See, you know, you, you know, uh, King Charles was on the uh, uh, news a lot week before last, and I was just looking, I was just looking at that, and I'm saying, man, that had to have been something. His mama dies, and they putting a crown on him. Man, wait, wait a minute, my mama just died, man. They didn't waste no time. Are you with me? He's got to mourn his mom and take over the position of king too. Well, well, Charles ain't the only one that had to do that. Solomon had to do that. Are y'all with me? Solomon was mourning his daddy and taking over king. But not only that, when he takes over king, his brother desired the throne. Are y'all with me? So now he's got, his dad is gone. He got the responsibility of the king. Then he's got one of his siblings trying to get him out of the way so he can be king. Are y'all with me? But look at this. His daddy told him, he says, now, everybody that's not faithful to you, you got to get rid of them. Now, now, now watch this, y'all. We fire people. Huh? <laughs> you fired. <laughs> Solomon didn't fire him, y'all. <laughs> so, Solomon didn't fire nobody. <laughs> Solomon, <laughs> Solomon created some funerals. Are y'all with me? That's a big difference. So Solomon, Solomon was carrying some stuff. He had to get rid of, and I mean get rid of them. Some people, he had to get rid of his brother. He had to take on the responsibility of being the king and mourn his daddy's death. But yet when God comes to Solomon, Solomon says, you have shown great kindness. Out of all of that, Solomon knew how to humble himself before God. I tell you, we go through some stuff. Yeah, you can say, Brother Faze, you don't know what I go through. I, and I don't. I don't. I'm not begging you to tell me. We'll pray together if you want to, but if you don't want to tell me, that's okay. Because I'll have your stuff and mine too. Are y'all with me? But if, but if you are getting uh, on in, in your thoughts about your stuff, just understand that you're not the only one who go through some stuff. And Solomon is going through some stuff and he still humbles himself before God. So no matter what you're going through, Solomon teaches us you can humble yourself before God. Don't let that be an excuse. Well, I, I mean, when I, well, you know, when I get to get through all of this, I'll be back. Are y'all with me? Now, the, the, the message to you is go and study Solomon. Because Solomon didn't wait until he got through anything to humble himself before God. Are y'all with me? Quit saying that. If you're saying it now, you need to repent of that. I'm going through some stuff, and so I'm not at myself. No, you're going through some stuff, and you take it to God. Are y'all with me? Yeah, we, we, now, and when I, and, and, and please, 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 I'm teaching this lesson, but I want you to know that I'm not insensitive to what anyone is going through. I'm not insensitive to that. All I'm teaching you is don't allow your circumstances to become more important than your relationship with God. The Bible says, cast all your cares 
upon him, for he cares for you. I perform open heart surgery on myself. Then I'm going to make a doctor's appointment. Well, doc, I just came in to see you. Who would you, would you hear for? You done already did the surgery. All you need to do is, is uh, take care of yourself. Are y'all with me? You don't go to the doctor when you done already healed yourself. Are y'all with me? So I'm going to get it straight, and then I'm going to come to the Lord. That's just like doing your own open heart surgery and then going to the doctor. Makes absolutely no sense, does it? Brother, brother I tell Brother Larry, Brother Larry, I, I, didn't, I didn't replace mine and took my transmission out, rebuilt it. It's running fine. I'm going to bring it down out to your shop and let you check it out. <laughs> what you bringing it down here for? What you done bringing it down here for? You done already done everything that needs to be done. If you can straighten yourself out, then my question is, why are you still here? You need to be on up in glory. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So when you have circumstances, bring them to God. Humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. That's the song. He will lift you up. That's right. So, so, so Solomon, Solomon believes that God is worthy of praise. And he uses a terminology that's not normal, that's not normally used. He says, he says, you have continued this great kindness, great kindness to him and given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Solomon says that God showed great kindness, great mercy. See, Solomon views what God did for David as great. And so he humbles himself and he offers, he worships, he, his worship is compatible to his view of God. Boy, don't let that fly over your head. Don't let that fly over your head. See, God is great because of his view of what God has done. If what God has done is great, then your view of God is great. Are y'all with me? So, so, so Solomon, Solomon praises God. And not only does Solomon praise God for his great kindness toward his father, he also praises God about his people. If the Solomon says he calls God's people great people. Great people. Now, now understand something about the children of Israel. The children of Israel had forsaken God many, many times. They have a king now because they wanted to be like other nations. And God told them in Deuteronomy chapter 7, the other nations are going to turn your heart away from me. So Solomon is sitting in the seat of the kingship of Israel because the children of Israel did not want to accept God as their king. Are y'all with me? And yet Solomon calls God's people great people. Understand, you, we're not great people in the church because we do all the things we do in a great way. We're not great people because everything that we do is right. We got everything going on uh, that's imaginable. No, we are great people because we belong to God. That's what makes us great people. Because we belong to God. I'm a work in progress. You are a work in progress. But we are great people only because we belong to God. Somebody's got their head down because they're feeling like they're no earthly good because they're so uh, messed up with what they do. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. I do this wrong. I do that wrong. Understand, you're never going to be great in and of yourself. You're great because of your connection with God. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living each moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you, too, because your grace and mercy brought me through. You looking at somebody and they're doing something that you're not doing, don't turn your nose up at them. 
You need God's grace and mercy too. You may not be doing what they're doing and what you're doing may not be public, but you need God's grace and mercy too. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. We're great people because of God's grace and mercy. So in praise and humility, Solomon considered himself God's servant, a vessel for God's use on earth. And such praise and humility motivated and energized, mobilized Solomon's answer to God in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse number 9. Solomon says, so give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Solomon's answer to God teaches us that worship that focuses on God's greatness, God's mercy, God's favor, positions our heart to yearn to live every moment of life being able to fulfill the calling to which God has called us. When our heart is in such a position, God is pleased. When you position your heart to want to do what God has called you to do every moment of your life, See, Solomon says, so give your servant a discerning heart. Let me ask us a question. How many days of the week do you have your heart with you? Have you ever walked out to go to work and said, oh, I got to go back home and get my heart? You don't go nowhere without your heart. Are y'all with me? How many hours of the day is your heart with you? 24 hours a day. Are y'all with me? Your heart is with you when you are asleep and your heart is with you when you are awake. Are y'all with me? Solomon says, give your servant a discerning heart. Now, I know somebody is uh, sitting there talking about now, Brother Frazier, you got to, you got to distinguish what heart he's talking about now because you're talking about the, the blood pump. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Uh, uh, and, and what is Solomon talking about? Solomon is talking about uh, his mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But let me, let me just enlighten you for a moment. You see this mind here and this blood pump is connected, y'all. It's connected. See, something can go wrong in this mind and this blood pump I act up. That's called blood pressure. Don't run my blood pressure up. See, so your doctor says stay out from under stress. Keep them wrinkles out your forehead so you can keep your blood pressure down. Are y'all with me? You understand that? So, so now, now when, you, when, when, when Solomon says, so give your servant an understanding heart to govern your people, understand he's going to govern the people with his mind and with this body. Are y'all with me? I want you to understand that. Because when Solomon performed, it ain't going to be his heart that performed. It's going to be his whole body. Are y'all with me? You rob a bank, and they catch you with the money in your hand. Huh? Your hands ain't going to jail. Take my hands on the jail. Cut them off right now and take them to jail. Are y'all with me? Nobody's hands get a life sentence. Are y'all with me? Your whole body get sinners. Your whole body goes to jail. Are y'all with me? So his whole, the whole of himself, the whole of yourself have to be in worship. Huh? Well, y'all, you got, you got to get this now. The whole of you. He wants all of you. He don't want your intentions. Lord knows my intentions. Now he won't, you, you, every man must stand before the judgment seat of Christ, giving account of things done in his intentions, huh? In his body. You don't have to give an account of 
all that is done in this body, whether good or bad. Are y'all with me? So, so, so you, 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 you've got to get your whole being in tune with the greatness of God. Now, now we, this, I'm going to go, I'm going to say this, and I want you to come back on at four. We're going to finish. But I got to say this one. See, 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 brother, brother Ron read verse number nine. Well, I'm going to read verse number 10. This is what we want. This is what we want. See, this, this verse here will make you jump up and down. Watch this. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. He was pleased. See, you see, the Lord was pleased with this worship. And that's what caused him to ask the question. The Lord saw where Solomon's heart was positioned. And he was pleased with where his heart was. Are y'all with me? See, he was pleased with his worship, and he was pleased with his heart. Are y'all with me? That's why, that's why I got to get some confidence from repeating a skill over and over. Are y'all with me? So I didn't do so good today. I didn't, I didn't, I was in worship, but my heart wasn't where it needed to be. So, so God, give me another chance. Anybody need to say, Lord, I need another chance to get my worship and my heart in sync so you can be pleased with me. And that's something. Yeah, so, so, so I'm going to patiently, watch this now. I'm a patient to use my communicative, my cognitive, my, my, my words, my cognitive, my thoughts, my coordinative, my deeds to make God look good. That's the whole of me. Huh? That ain't just my intentions. That's the whole of me. And that's something. If you hear this morning, we, we got to stop. We'll pick up tonight. We'll pick up tonight. He was pleased. I want God to be pleased with you. Come to Jesus. Rededicate your life to Jesus by repentance, confession, and prayer. If you're not a Christian, this is a perfect time for you to become a Christian. The only way that you're going to find favor with God is to become a Christian. And you become a Christian the same way individuals did and acts. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not nothing new. I know, got new, I know we got new phones and new cars and all this new technology. But there ain't no new gospel. Same gospel. same gospel. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same gospel. He died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. The blood is shed at Calvary. Purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Acts 20, verse 28. Mark 16, 15 and 16. Believe that gospel. Believe it to the point that you'll repent. You'll make up in your mind that God is right about everything. That's what Solomon was. Solomon, Solomon was, he, he believed that God was right. In 1 Kings chapter 3. Yeah, he believed God was right. You must believe that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38. Confess Jesus, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you. All your sins are washed away. Everything that you've done, thought or said, yes, will be washed away. And the Lord will allow his blood to cleanse you going forward. He'll add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47. He'll add you to the church of Christ. Romans 16 and verse 16. This is your opportunity. Will you come? Come right now as we stand and sing.
All day long of Jesus, I am singing. My song of joy will never be. All the while he keeps my heart bells ringing. For his love is everything to me. I know that he is my king. Oh, I dearly love Oh, he's my king. No other is above him. All day long in raptured praise I sing. Oh, he's my savior. He's my king. Streams of love are all my soul flowing from his heart loves everlasting spring that is why my faith in him i'm showing that is why an endless song i i know that he I dearly love him. Oh, he's my king. No other is above him. All day long in raptured praise I sing. Oh, he's my savior. He's my king, my blessed king. Amen. Amen. We have some. Hold on, We have some standing, and, and we're going to hear uh, their response. And then I have an announcement I want to make, Sister Pam. First of all, I would like to let you know that I'm standing here in behalf of our sister Brenda Carr. I want to first of all say that God has been good, and Brenda had a very successful surgery last Monday afternoon, and we're thankful for that. I want to thank our church family. You guys really, really don't know 